it was a beautiful day. The sun was shining, the birds were chirping, and the geese they were playing. When all of a sudden, I heard an awful chatter. Mom, what's for dinner? Pause. Now you have one of two options. Either you can hand them the utensils and say, Hey, I taught you how to cook. Go well, cook it yourself and tell me what's for dinner. Or you can start the endless countdown to... <gasps> oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to cook for dinner. I need to take out the freezer. I need to thaw out. I need to chop this. I need to cook that. I need to chop that. Oh no, what am I going to do? I just wanted to chill a day. Enjoy my day. Oh no, and just drown in exhaustion. I just dream of oh, how it would be like if I only had some food trays oh my life would be so much easier no more cooking dinners i could just do whatever i want with my day i could play my guitar i could work on my project i could look like this happy <gasps> that's it i got it i ain't cooking You don't have time to be in the kitchen cooking every day, day in and day out. Uh uh, we don't do that. This helps me out a lot, um, especially when we're getting late in the evening. And you know, us women, we wear so many hats, we have so many other things to do, and dinner is not supposed to be one of them. Dinner is not supposed to be one of them. Dinner is not supposed to be one of them. All right, so let's get to cooking, and I'm starting with my salmon. Look how yummy that is. So I'm starting with about four salmon fillets, and I'm just going ahead and chopping my garlic cloves. So that's about three cloves of garlic there. And you can use coconut aminos or soy sauce. And you wanna just take about one fourth cup of soy sauce, pour it over your salmon, about two tablespoons of date sugar or honey, and two tablespoons of sriracha. Then you want to add one tablespoon of coconut oil. Go ahead and melt that in the microwave. And you wanna get each filet coated, wrap it and marinate it overnight or at least for a couple hours. All right, so on to my stuffed peppers. So they came out very yummy, as you can see. Now, what I did first was just add my one pound ground beef to my pot here. Add two garlic cloves and a half of an onion. For my seasonings, I'm using cumin, chili powder, black pepper, and my sea salt. So that's a dash of black pepper and a dash of salt, two teaspoons of ground cumin, two teaspoons of chili powder, add two tablespoons of tomato paste, and add one 10 ounce can of red enchilada sauce. Now while I'm doing this, I'm going ahead and boiling my chicken and my turkey for my later recipes. Now for the cornbread mix for the stuffed peppers, you want two boxes of Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix, one cup sour cream, one cup frozen corn, two large eggs, and four tablespoons of melted butter and mix that up. Now, I did throw in some cookies in the oven as well, along with the stuffed peppers, but what I wanted to mention, because my footage got lost, was that I layered the bell peppers. All I did was de-seed them, take out the insides, and layer it with the meat mix and the cornbread mix and whatever cheese you like. Cookies are all done here. They are looking super yummy, so I have oatmeal cookies and chocolate chip cookies. And finally, my peppers are all done, and look how yummy that turned out my daughter she loves this so now on to the chicken lasagna doesn't that look yummy chicken lasagna that's a twist to your pasta so for the chicken lasagna I'm taking and layering my noodles I'll like to soak my noodles first so I'm thinking about nine noodles I'm just gonna let it sit in there for a little while and what I'm doing now is just taking the skin off my chicken
Now the turkey is also done, so I'm just going ahead and doing the same thing to the turkey and just taking the skin off the meat there. And I'm gonna go ahead and chop my onion. So about one cup of chopped onions. I have two tablespoons of garlic. So I'm just gonna go ahead and chop that up. Now I added my mushrooms. So about eight ounces of mushrooms. I like to use the portobello mushrooms. Now I'm going to add about one teaspoon of dried basil, one half teaspoon of red pepper flakes, one teaspoon of dried oregano, one and one half teaspoons of salt. Now I'm also adding about eight ounces of spinach two cups of my chopped chicken now in a separate pot I'm doing one half cups of milk and two and one half cups of chicken stock one fourth teaspoon of nutmeg one half cup of Parmesan cheese and one fourth cup of all-purpose flour now don't do what I did. I screwed up and I was so lazy I didn't want to make a roux. You can make your roux in the other pot with your spinach and onion mixture. But I just put the flour right into the soup there. But what I'm doing right here is just layering everything. So once you get that all mixed up, that roux mixed up, you just want to layer everything and put it in the oven. And my salmon is finished marinating. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that in the oven as well. All right, I'm just checking my lasagna here and it's not quite done. So I'm going to stick that back in the oven. Now my salmon is finally finished. Uh-oh, see that's why I put aluminum foil at the bottom of my oven. My lasagna just drips like crazy, but it is done right here and it looks so yummy. It came out very nice. Now for my maple carrots, all I did was chop up some carrots, throw them in some water, and add my maple, my raw maple syrup to the pot and just boil it down. And that was it. And I also went ahead and made a pot of spinach. And what I did with that was about 16 ounces of spinach. And I'm going to add my garlic. So about one clove of garlic. Well, that's probably two cloves, but it's counting. And just a little bit of butter. Now for the turkey pot pie. Look how yummy and flaky that crust looks. It came out so yummy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I made my roux. I had to slow down and refocus, so don't wanna mess up the roux this time. So I just added three tablespoons of butter, about a medium onion or half of an onion. Three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up. 3 4 cups of cooking wine, 1 and 1 third cups of heavy cream, and you want to save some of that cream for brushing the pie at the end. I'm going to add 2 and 1 half cups of my turkey, 1 and 1 half cups of frozen peas, 3 tablespoons of chopped parsley, and about 2 teaspoons of thyme, a dash of salt and pepper. Give that a good mix there. Now on to the crust, and I'm going to show you how to make the most flakiest crust of all. So about three and three fourth cups of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of salt, two tablespoons of sugar, and you want to add your butter but you want to make sure that your butter is cold so that is the secret make sure that everything is cold even if you have to put it back into the freezer but you know not frozen but cold so here i'm adding about one and one half tablespoons of apple cider vinegar make sure that that is cold as well and i'll also be adding six tablespoons of ice water as i go and what i like to do with my water is put it in ice that way it stays extra cold and so here I'm just going to be using my hands, but don't use your hands because you don't want to bring the temperature down in your dough. So you don't want your hands to drop that temperature in your dough. And I'm just going to get ready to roll this out onto my surface here. So what I'm going to do is just flour my surface. That way everything does not stick. And I'm going to take my rolling pin and just roll that out. 
and so I'm going to flip this into my pan here and I'm going to take my knife and just kind of neatly cut around the edges cut off that extra dough make it look nice and neat and then I'm going to add my vegetable mixture now I'm going to do the same thing as previously done. I'm going to do the top part of my dough. So I'm going to flour my surface and just roll out my dough here. And also make sure that you put on an old shirt because things can get kind of messy. So I'm just rolling everything out, flouring as I go. And I'm going to flip that onto the top of my pie. And I'm going to do the same thing and just level up those edges there. And I'm just kind of using my hands to crumple the edges just to make it look nice and neat and store-bought right and I'm taking my knife to put some slits in the top and I'm going to take my heavy cream and brush it over the top and then I'm going to add some salt and voila you have a pie a pot pie and look how yummy that looks just bubbling in the oven all right, so here I'm just making some broccoli, and of course what I did is just boiled them once the water got really hot and added some salt. Now on to my sour cream and chives mashed potatoes. So I have four potatoes here, and I'm just going to peel those. Next, I'm just adding about one tablespoon of chives and about six tablespoons of sour cream, a teaspoon of salt, and one fourth cup of butter and I'm just going to mash that up and voila nice and creamy and yummy now for my brownies and basically I'm just kind of following the directions on the box here I'm going to be using my vegan butter and I'm going to be using my flax seeds to make a flax egg and you want to think for every one tablespoon of flax seed you want to use three tablespoons of water so it's a one to one ratio so for every egg that you need you want one tablespoon of flax seeds and I'm just letting that soak and after that soak I'm just adding in the rest of the ingredients just mixing everything together here and what I'm going to do is just level that out in the pan and the reason why I made this vegan is because I was going to try some of it, but I ended up not eating any of it. But my daughter liked it. She said it came out very good, so she liked it. Now on to my cauliflower mushroom soup. Now this is the star of my show other than my food trays, but I messed up the recipe because I was trying to move so fast and get done with all this cooking that I mixed up the mushroom mixture with cauliflower cashew mixture. So it turned out into mush as you can see here, but I will be posting it on my channel as a single recipe so you can check that out on my channel. But she'll eat this as a grilled cheese sandwich and I do have some sprouted multigrain bread right here. So that is it you all. This is the end of my long, long day of cooking. But it is so worth it because I won't have to cook again for about two months. Um, what I did was put a variety of vegetables on each plate. Um, some of them have different desserts and she has a variety of protein. So um, salmon, beef, turkey, and chicken. And I tried to do um, one soup and sandwich. And that's also a vegetarian meal, so at least one vegetarian meal. We also eat out at least one day a week. And so normally I don't cook unless I want to. Uh, I try to do like a specialty meal here and there that way they don't get bored eating the same thing um, for a whole month. And that helps the trays to last a little bit longer. So that's how I make it last for about two months. It's just sometimes we can hear and there when I feel like it. And so yeah, that is it. Now my son, he's a little picky, so I really didn't make him any trays um, because last time he didn't eat any of it and my daughter ended up eating his trays. So um, what I did was I had a bunch of leftovers actually, so I'm going to put those in the freezer bags or I have his pouches and so I think I might just throw them in there and just freeze them. That way I don't have to worry about them spoiling 
you just eat them if he eats them okay so on to the food trays and just make sure when you buy food trays that the lid stays down because when i bought these i was so in a rush i was done with cooking i just wanted some food trays but i was having to tape down the sides because the lid does not stay down properly and what i did was just label the top of one meal in each food tray and that way she can just pull from the bottom and I also had to cut up the bell peppers to make sure that they were able to lay down into the food trays. But what I'll do is just put each meal with that labeled food tray on top in a bag and just stick it into the freezer. All right, so I won't be featuring a lot of these meat type dinners on my channel. Um, when I do, I will try to feature a vegan or vegetarian recipe because that is what my channel is geared towards, more vegan and vegetarian meals. My family eats meat, so hey, it is what it is. And so, yeah, the moral of the story is go get yourself some food trays. Bye-bye. <laughs>